Hi guys, James from DBG here and welcome to an unboxing video. I haven't done one of these for a while. Um, as you can see, this is a bolt action one. I have not done any bolt action stuff for me personally or even for any clients for a good few months now. So um, when this one popped up on eBay, I thought, yeah, I'll grab it. Um, this is the older one. I think this is the updated older one and we'll find out when we open it because the original one had resin vehicles in it. I believe this could have the what was then a new plastic um, Sherman in it, but we'll find out. Anyway, this is the bolt action US Army, a uh, US starter army. Um, it is a thousand points. They have given you a nice little breakdown on the side. So you have a second lieutenant with an extra man, four full strength infantry squads with SMG and BAR, 60 mil mortar, which is a light mortar, a um, 50 cal, an M3 half track. Even though this one's given it additional 30 cals, which I wouldn't do. And a M4A3 Sherman. So this is specifically designed for 43 onwards, when the uh, M4A3 was first coming out. So yeah, as I said, this is the older one, so this is the um, first iteration of the American infantry. So they're not as crisp as I, as I did um, some for Conflict 47 and then had to unfortunately sell them. Anyway, these are the other ones, so they have multiple arm options, unlike the new ones which have pretty much set arms in place. So you can just slot them onto the body. <coughs> so yeah, also you get uh, bazookas and stuff in here as well. So, without further ado, let's get this bad boy open. Right, put on the floor for now. So there you go. So, let's open her up. Yes, it is the updated first iteration of the box. So we have the plastic M4 Sherman. We have lots and lots and lots of sprues of American infantry. An awful lot of sprues of American infantry. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten sprues of American infantry. We'll look at those individually later. We have... Oh, that's a base for... Yeah, and we've lost a guy. We have the weapon sprues. This gives you M1s, M1 carbines. There's a... M98 trench shotgun in there. There's Colt 1911s. And at the top there, you have Springfield 1903 sniper rifle, a BAR, a couple of Thompsons, an M3 grease gun, a bazooka, and two M1s with fixed and bayonet also the accompanying ammunition packs. So those ones there are for the BAR. That's for the Thompson of the grease gun. And we've got bandoliers here of M1 or possibly even carbine rounds. And there's binoculars and grenades and holstered stuff there. We have the two metal kits. This is the yeah. This is the 50 cal. Um, I won't be using this because I have a 30 cal, which is far more useful than a 50 cal. So this is going to be put away. And then here we have the 60 millimeter mortar 
we shall have a look at, it, look at it properly. And then last but not least, we have the M3 half track. And in the bottom here, we actually have, we have a BAR and a fighting knife. Well, focus, focus. The BAR and the fighting knife that's popped off the sprues. And then we have the instructions and two sets of decals. The one with the US flags and the big star is for the M3 and the one with loads of little stuff and these Harlequin style diamonds is for the, sorry, that's for the Sherman, that's for the M3. And um, I'm glad those have got those because I'll talk about what I'm planning to do with the army in a bit. So, let's pop this to one side and have a look at the instructions. This just gives you a bit of blurb about um, the US infantry in the war and the equipment. And then it gives you a list of everything that's there. And then on the back, it gives you a parts list and some example of some completed miniatures. Um, these, like I said, these are the older style, so you actually have to go through this and match up the arms. So when building these, it's always best to do them one at a time, keep all the arms together. I know some people like to clip everything off. Never do that. Don't clip it off. Otherwise, your your arms will get mixed up and nothing will look right. So yeah, this this is the older style. Um, I think the only one that still does this is the Soviet, both winter and summer uniforms. Uh, they haven't been updated yet. Oh, and the British, because the British plastic set hasn't been updated yet. But yeah, then we have. The instruction sheets for both that's the obviously the M3 half track. This seems pretty straightforward on how to put it together. The great thing about this is there's loads of spare packs and things you can stick along the side. And I've also got a um storage sprue from Rubicon left over from a previous stuff, so I can add some stuff to that. And then here's the M4. Again, I've got some Rubicon stowage bits and bobs that I can add. And this, yeah, this is, I think it's the second, possibly third one they did. I think they did T34, 85 first, then the Panzer IV, and then this in plastic. So, the M3. Now I've seen people build this um, and obviously Rubicon do an M3 as well and apparently the Rubicon one because the crew compartment at the back is one piece I believe and you just have to glue the doors on everyone says it goes better slightly easier than the Warlord Games one where you have to put each side of the compartment together but all in all I don't think it's going to matter too much and it is still a nice kit it's, it's crisp it's wall of games plastic so um, it's not uh, it's it's hard but still quite malleable and then we have the interior of the crew compartment then there's the driver there's the ring for the 50 cal and there's a post so if you don't put that on and just have the post you can do the american army from 42 but if you do that put that on with that it is the american army from 44 and as you can see there's a few items of storage here and there they can put on but i've got lots more that i can use now here's a sherman i have actually built one of these before Not 
difficult, it's quite an easy kit. I'm actually glad they're doing separate stuff because as you can see, some of the bits have already fallen off. So yeah, we've got two sprues and in here, you've actually got two commanders. You've got a British guy there, an American guy there. You've got the two wheels, um, sides of the hole with the bogies on. You have your drive sprockets there. Antenna, which I will not be putting on. Or if I do, I'll use my... Um, if you use the bristles from a plastic brush, a nylon brush, they make perfect whip aerials. So there's the um, engine compartment. There's your mantlet. There's the turret. There's the 75 with the attached 30 cal. And then we have top and bottom of the hull and two piece tracks. Unlike Rubicon, now I'm a big fan of Rubicon's um single piece tracks but kind of everything and i do believe these need a tiny bit of green stuff because there will be a bit of gapping at the joins so a tiny bit of green stuff there or you could just hide it with mud so let's do the mortar Let's zoom in. There we go. And you see, unlike most other nations, the American light mortar or the 60 millimeter mortar has three crew, not two, which seems a bit odd. But the good thing about this one is is that the actual tube, sorry if I can get my fat fingers, is moulded, okay it's a bit bent, but it's moulded onto the base plate. Unlike other ones, where you have to glue the tube to the base plate and then the stand to the tube, which is one of the most annoying things you could possibly need to do. But we have, here's the crew members, focus, there we go. Standard quite early, probably about 10 years old, one of games metals, still good, still good. But the new metal, so you see they've still got the, uh, I'm gonna need to clean that up with the um, entrenching tool handlers, but still really good quality for something that is actually quite old. There we've got the guy with the bomb case, and then we got, well, I believe it could be the spotter. But yeah, they all go together on one base, which is the larger 40 mil base. And we've got the Mardus. This one actually has four crew. Trying to get everything centered. This has four crew. And as you can see, everything is slightly bent, which is the downside of packing it where it is. But as I said, it's not too much of an issue because I'm actually not going to be using this. I'm going to be using this guy as a spotter for um, the mortar. And then the rest I will be putting in the bits box. I'll give him an M1. Um, but yeah, as you can see, moulding is okay. It's just a shame that the packing means everything gets a little bit bent, which is one of the downsides of the way Warlord games do this sort of thing. But there's not a lot you can do about that. As I said, this army set is a few years old. Now, let's have a look at the infantry. 
As I said, there's 10 spruces, so there's actually 50 guys in here. You have four guys, either advancing or in a firing pose, and then the last guy at the bottom there is kneeling. You have a nice selection of heads with either netted helms or clear helms, and that guy there has got the um, woolen forage cap on. You've got two different styles of backpack. And you've got all your entrenching tools and stuff. And then you've got your ammunition pouches. And then last but not least, at the bottom, you've got your bases. So this is the way Warlord Games used to do it. The German, American, British and Soviet ones are all like this. When they first came out, and as you can see, for a kit that's quite not that old, there's actually not a lot of mold ones on, which I'm surprised about because Warlord Games has can have a propensity for a large amount of mold lines, especially on their infantry, but there's not that many. Which I'm really impressed about, especially considering if you saw the previous video about Sisters of the Battle, the mold lines on there was. Yeah, anyway, so yeah. So yeah, so actually I'm really quite impressed with that. I've never actually seen this kit up close before. I've painted a couple of them, already pre-built um, for clients, but I've never actually built them. So it's gonna be a first for me. Now, as I said, let's go back to that decal sheet. Zoom in. These two diamond shapes on the side here were put on the side of French tanks. Now I'm planning on doing a late war French force with these guys. There's actually, I don't know if you can see because the light in here and there's actually quite a few decals you can put on the side for French vehicles as well. So yeah, these guys will be French. And I have the, I'll just get it, because it's just over here in my new room. Yeah, the campaign book, Battle of the Bulge, which actually has a late war French army. <coughs> I'm list at the back of it, which I'm using. So I actually have in my bits box some British paratrooper bits, which I'm actually going to add to these. Um, some berets and some stems and some brens, because the French, because of the way everything happened to France in the Second World War. <coughs> Those who were evacuated from Dunkirk, most of them went back to France just to start their lives. A, a, a tiny percentage of them joined the resistance. But a core, I think it was about 3,000, stayed in, in Britain with um, de Gaulle and uh, formed the core of the Free French Forces there. Then there was obviously uh, French forces in Africa, in the French possessions over there. Some wanted to stay with Vichy. Some didn't like the way Vichy was going, or the Germans, and so they made the arduous trek from Africa all the way around the arse end of the world, then going through Russia, going that way, and ended up in Britain in about 1941, and uh, joined de Gaulle there, and then it all escalated from there, and then by the time the invasion of France happens, they have paratroopers, they have commandos, they have armoured divisions, they have infantry divisions, they have all the colonies that were once part of Vichy. Um, so you've got um, the Algerians, the Senegalese, the Syrians, loads of them. Some have been fighting through Africa. Some have been fighting through Italy, and they all meet up 
um, basically for the invasion of France. And then um, French units fight their way through France, Belgium, some parts of the Netherlands, and then into Germany, where France actually um, has a zone of Germany under its control, even though they had quite minimal forces in comparison to the other allies towards the end of the war. Obviously, the beginning of the war, the French army is one of the biggest armies in the world. But obviously, we all know what happened there. Anyway, a bit of rambling. Sorry about that. This is video is going to be 20 odd minutes long. Anyway, so that's my plan. I've got some power stuff that I'm going to slap on these guys. So Stens, Brens, Berets. I think I might have a few British bits of kit as well left over on those sprues so I can do that. So they're going to be what was known as a Brigade de Choc, which is basically a conglomeration of French troops that was all the elite French troops and they were put together and put on special missions um, towards the latter part of the war normally around 1945 anyway that's my plans um, I'm currently having a bit of a week off even though if the video goes out I'm probably back at work um, but my plan for this week was to set up my new room which there should be a video out soon if not already, um, and then build a number of things I have lying around so I can spend the rest of March, because March is my month for doing my own stuff. And I'm going to paint as much as humanly possible in the rest of the month. I've got just over four weeks left once I've, made, I've built all this. Paint as much as humanly possible so when April comes along, I can start my I start my commission work again. I have a number of armies of different systems, all painted, so I can do some fun stuff. Anyway, as usual, do please check out the links in the description to all our affiliates and sponsors. Um, specifically, the Goblin Gaming one. You click on that, go straight through to the Goblin Gaming store, and you will get fifteen or twenty percent off, and we get a small cut from that. This goes towards helping us make these videos. And as usual, guys, if you've stuck with me this far, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.